is going to help. And I'm going like, well, you can't run across the street and beat them up. You're in uniform. They'll court-martial you. But the real thing that hit me was, you don't know who I am. You just see a uniform, and the people you're calling baby killers um, are about three years younger than you are, and, and the only reason that they're in Vietnam is because you got to go to college, and they didn't get to go to college. And that feeling of you don't know who I am is, I think, a great deal of why I wrote this book. It's like, this is what it's like to be 19 trying to grow up in a combat zone. It's just us. It's just ordinary kids. But we have other things to do than, you know, get an A on our history test. And uh, that's what I think kept, kept me motivated to, you know, go through what I can only call humiliation of getting people <laughs> rejecting you for really spurious reasons. I mean, I had people say, well, why don't you just move it to the Gulf War? I mean, maybe we could sell that, you know. And I thought, God, Microsoft, you know, search and replace. I'll just hit jungle and desert and, bzzz, you know, and then we, we got a new novel. And, you know, I mean, New York, you know, I mean, they're into business. You know, they're not into literature. It's a very difficult marriage. Sure, we're here. Chris, thanks a lot to you. Thanks. Um, while you were in combat and you go through the grind and the stress of uh, being the leader, what did you do or what helped you preserve your character and morals? Mm, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I don't know. That's a great question because I haven't thought about it. Sometimes I didn't preserve it. So putting that one aside. But generally speaking, I was, I was a good officer and I did. I think there's, there's a lot of things. One of them is what I just talked about here, traditions, traditions. I mean, these things are, you know, they may look silly, and they certainly look silly to civilians. But simple things like, well, the Marines just don't quit in assaults. I mean, it's impossible. You just don't do that. So when you get out of your hole and you, and you decide you're going to go into an assault, you will go through with it because you just don't quit, and that's, that's already been drilled into you. Why? Because we're all on the same team. And again, that, that is drilled into you. I mean, it's like, you know, somebody screws up and you've been through this, the whole platoon does punishment. That's why that's done. Because those sorts of traditions are what shore you up. I think another thing is, quite frankly, uh, your friends shore you up. Um, you, you realize that, that, that things are tough and you sit down and you just basically you start to bitch and, and gripe about it. And pretty soon you start to joke about it and you start to get things like oh, this is really you know foobard and, and you, it's a, it, again you get some, get your perspective back I mean I, were, I there were times when, over there that I was murderously angry at, at some senior officers and I think if I'd been in a situation where I would have you know been able to pop them with a rifle I would have but but you know 20 seconds later after I let it out and some friend of mine says well you know you can't shoot him, can you? Mm, I guess I can't, you know. And you get back in, you know, you, you, suddenly you're sort of back into space. So that's very important. I mean, you work with people. And then I think that there's, there's values that you carry from, from your religion. There's values that you carry from your home. And all those things are, you, you'll be amazed at, at, at what you can draw on, um, how deep it goes. I don't think you need to worry if you come from a kind of a background where those things have been instilled in you. You're not even conscious of them until that moment and then then there's something in you some steel some fiber that comes out and that's something that your grandfather said to you i mean you don't know what it is but uh just trust that it'll be there it's a quiet group sure <coughs> I think that the basic school is a very practical school. I mean, what, what I learned there was, here's how you call in artillery fire. Here's how you get close air support. Here's how you organize an assault on a, on a fortified position. Here's, here's how you lay out machine guns so that they cover avenues of approach. These are, we learn those skills. And those are, <laughs> You do not want to go into war without that. And uh, they were trying to run us through in about four or five months. And uh, so it was, you know, we were trying to get it all packed in real fast. They did a good job of that. I, I felt completely prepared technically. 
I did not feel very prepared, what I might call spiritually. Um, there was no talk about when you're 50 years old and you're